Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Arganian's Puzzle Box. In today's video, I am excited to present to you the uh, uh, dig Digital Herbarium, which is a system for Unreal Engine using Nanite Foliage that I've developed for my World Forge project. So this Digital Herbarium contains five different plants and they're all fully customizable with a very, very powerful shader. It allows you to have full control over the wind, coloring, can have entire fields of grass that look dynamically different um, and thus you won't have a repetitive looking scene. This works really well with nanite landscapes such as my World Forge tool but it can also work as a standalone. I and we will continue to develop this tool further for other people uh, you know for, for, for future um, types of foliage and, and environment and biome so stay tuned for that uh, but without any further delays let me just show you what's possible with this system and maybe if you like it, you'd like to support the channel by uh, buying it over on Fab or on Patreon or any other place that I have it available. So let's begin. Now we've got the project open and this is what you'll have inside the folder when you open it. It's going to be called Digital Herbarium. You're going to have a map folder, some blueprints, the foliage itself and then some textures and material. Now in the maps folder, you will have two maps, Demo and Demo 2. You won't have this level grass here because this is just purely a grassland, but I'm going to show you the maps that you will have when you open them. So this is uh, basically running right now in Unreal Engine 5.5, but obviously this works for 5.3 and 5.4 as well. Now this is the scene that I have uh, opened, and as you can see, it's got a lot of foliage in it. Some of the foliage is extremely large, and I've done that on purpose just to be able to iterate it, and obviously there's some other foliage that's quite small. Now, a lot of the foliage is being spawned using the procedural foliage spawner. And then there's quite a bit of it right here placed by hand. And I've done this because obviously I wanted to add various different types of foliage in the same scene. Now, I'm just going to press play so that we can move with the character inside the world. And as you can see right now, I am walking through this and I'm looking at my... Uh, foliage. Now, one of the things that you will be noticing here is that we have a BP foliage wind control, and which also has the foliage reactive system, which we can then enable so we can trample onto the foliage itself. And then we also have the wind intensity, you know, how much the wind actually blows in the scene, and, you know, various different settings to change how the foliage sort of reacts, you know, like in what direction the foliage is uh, sort of blowing in the wind and things like that. But if we actually now move with the character in the world, you'll notice that when I do move, it will react with, it will inter intersect with the foliage, thus effectively trampling it as we move along. And if I move through the, this field of flowers, uh, you'll notice that, you know, we're able to, as I said, collide with the foliage, which will, depending on the size and shape of your character, it will sort of move the foliage. But just bear in mind, this is a shader manipulation and not something else. So this is not some complicated, um, you know, bone uh, uh, version of this, where we're not, we're not using anything spectacularly, you know, complicated in order to move this foliage. We're just move using the shader itself. Now, the wind itself right now is kind of a bit too much, so I am going to play around with some of these settings, you know, just reduce some of this, uh, some of these blends, um, maybe, you know, something like that, just so we get a bit more natural feel to the foliage. So just going to move around and have a look at the subsurface scattering here, and then you'll notice it's happening in the sunlight. All the foliage has this, and the uh, these plants over here as well, they can, they're the same plant, this is the same plant multiple times, but depending on its elevation and size, it will have the coloring will change. So you can have coloring that's a bit more green, and then also coloring, I mean, it could be any color really, but this is just something that I've been doing. Now, if I, for example, open uh, this uh, plant, so let me just go over into my foliage here, we see we can have, we have five groups of foliage, and I can open this plant. Um, this is the plant itself, and this one has two materials as opposed to all the other ones which have only one material. And the reason this has two is because one is for the actual flowers and one is for the plant itself. So if we open the flower, there's, I mean, 
a lot of options in here, right? But starting at the top, we this is the main parameter area where we can change things like the roughness of the material, the subsurface scattering. So for example, we could turn this down or you know even go into the minus point, or we could make it extremely bright in the sunlight. By default, obviously, it's set to one. You've also got a some gradient power. So this is allowing us to change that color that you're seeing right there, how the gradient of the color variation is affecting uh, this we also have a gradient offset which effectively allows us again to kind of control that gradient of the color even further we can also enable opacity mask or disable them obviously normal maps or disable them in the roughness we over here we have the color variation which then allows us to for example um, affect some of the colors so you can see this is a the color variation here this this one is applying over onto some of the plants so we can obviously change the color of that if we want to right and this is what's going to allow us to control the intensity of that change or desaturate or saturate it some more and again we could make this so that it affects uh, all of them if we you know all the plants if we want to but right now the other the other ones here are overwritten by the color variation down here so we have world space variation what this means is that depending on uh, certain parameters here like the uv tiling this can affect how how the you know how the coloring of all these plants across the across the field is going to be changed but i can show you this better using the grass rather than these flowers uh, so let's just open that map over here uh, i'm not going to save the changes but i'm going to edit the grass instead uh, which is in this scene and will spawn uh based on um obviously based on the foliage system and by the way the landscape itself is also nanite displaced as you can see here so you're getting tessellation on this as well now you can you'll notice that this grass has different patches everywhere where their colors are different okay so you know dark gray dark green lighter green and so on right so what i'm going to do now um, is i'm going to open the grass material so let me just go over here into the material oh, sorry Actually, I'm going to open the foliage instead and I'm going to double click on the material and we want to, for example, change the tiling of these changes. So we'll go to the color variation here and if we start playing around with the tiling, you'll notice some changes. Hopefully this is visible on YouTube and we also have this other one which is going to change again the tiling of that variation in various different ways. So you could really have massive fields of grass right now oh sorry this is this is a nanite bug that you're seeing right here so don't be don't be afraid if you're seeing this problem this has nothing to do with the project itself or anything like that it's just that we drew, we reached a limit and you have to increase it with the console commands of how much nanite foliage you can have in the scene uh, so that's more like a hard cap in unreal engine 5.5 nothing really to do with the foliage system i do have a lot of grass here right spawned in but you can see just how what changes that made just by changing this particular uh tiling and obviously we could go in here and change the other tiling now which is allowing us to control the way the foliage is sort of spawned even more so you see that it creates those uh, mini patches within the big patch of coloring and then obviously we can change the color of that in however way we want just making even more intricate sort of detail you can see this one is changing those big shapes over there um, and then further down we have the base color of the actual foliage and where the text where the atlas of the foliage is being loaded so all of the foliage in this package is all being generated through this texture pack here uh, now obviously you're seeing an opacity on it but that's not active in, in for for uh, for grass right but every every part of the foliage within this uh, within this project is just on one texture uh for base color and then one for normal and one that contains the other maps like um ambient occlusion and things like that so here we can actually control the brightness of the texture that we've set over here so right now obviously i can set this to whatever i want although it is being overwritten by the color variation up here so that's why it's like sort of like creating a different kind of uh, blend but this is really cool because it really allows you to have some really really cool looking uh grass you also have an ambient occlusion slider that's allowing you to add a bit of fake sort of shadowing to your grass um thus depending on what type of scene you're trying to create it will be able to give you more contrast obviously you can reduce this ambient occlusion to zero or have it shown up um, this is the normal map that's being loaded here and we also have a settings to make the 
uh, sort of the uh, in the foliage wet. So right now it's set to one, but I could set this to zero or minus one or minus five, and now the foliage looks very wet. So if I press play, uh, right, and if I am now moving in through the scene, you can see that the foliage now looks really wet when we look at it. And if I go over here and set this over to one, now the foliage is no longer wet. But all of this can also be controlled through the foliage wind control, which is over here. Right now the um, uh, wetness is, I believe, set to one, but this can also be minus five, for example, or 10 to make it really, you know, like uh, just, just the slider is basically in reverse. Just bear that in mind, right? So instead of um, uh, it working as a, uh, a positive value adding more wetness is actually the negative value that's going to add more wetness into the scene, right? Um, let's just have a look then at the wind control. So let's have a look at the uh, wind control system over here, and which is the biggest chunk of this foliage. There's a lot of uh, settings in here that you can play with, so I'm just going to show you a couple of them. But for example, we have a wind field tiling, so we could set this up to maybe like a five. And then we can have a look at increasing some of the strength here of the wind gust. So let's just we just put it over to ten like that. And now I'm just gonna want to have a look and see. You know, you can you can kind of see these fields that are moving around. So let's try ten maybe. Um, we can also add a bit of wind curve. And now you can kind of see how it's sort of doing these gusts across the field, which is really cool because obviously this is going to allow us to have an even more um, you know, like you can see that the entire field is being affected by this. Um, and you can, for example, go in here and say, you know what, I want, um, I want this to be even further. Like for example, the wind intensity, we can increase this now. And you can see these gusts just coming through a lot more often now, but it's kind of like pressing down on the foliage too much. So you want to be careful with how much you're doing of that. So let me just press play so you can kind of see this in action. Um, but again, you've got to find the right settings for what you're trying to, to achieve. Um, once the foliage is spawned, you can see now it's kind of pressing too much. So it's like almost going underground because of it. So you would want to go in here and just say, well, you know what, this is probably a bit too much. So maybe a two or something like that. And then the wind intensity again to two. You obviously got noise textures that you can load up to change how this uh, uh, noise is affecting the grass. Um, and then we also can use world aligned wind in case you don't have any ver vertex color onto the foliage. So this foliage particularly has a vertex color embedded into it in order to use that as a, as a mask for, um, how the wind affects it. But you can also use, as I said, a world aligned wind, which is just purely made into the shader of Unreal that controls, uh, how the wind affects the, the grass. And we can also turn on snow, for example. So if we do that, the foliage will now obviously turn white because it will load up um, a, a new way, you know, a new blend, which is going to be a snow blend, right? And you can see that I've just changed it real time as well. I didn't have to leave the play mode in order to do this, uh, but that's really cool. Uh, let's just disable the snow. And then over in here, in terms of like wind and stuff, you still have uh, plenty of settings. So I'm just going to, you know, just really do some, um, some crazy things in here. Like, look at that, you know what I mean? Like you've got to, you got to be very careful with some of these settings in order to see just how how much it's affecting things. Um, but let's you know right now I've just increased the heavy wind speed, so we're getting heavy wind in our foliage quite often. Now a lot of people might just say, well, does that look realistic, or does it, or does it not, and whatnot? I would say just look and uh, look onto the look on reference online for re, you know for actual foliage and how it reacts to wind depending on certain wind conditions because you would be surprised actually just how uh, foliage uh, especially tall grass uh, reacts over into uh, you know very strong winds so just bear that in mind because there's a lot to there's a lot of reference out there that will kind of give you a good guide of how to use this obviously you can use your own foliage with this system quite easily as long as the foliage has vertex max uh, vertex uh, masks if not just use the world aligned one um but uh it's not that complicated like you can you can add whatever textures you want in here if you have one one foliage for one texture so for example let's say you have a new grass that's just using the whole texture for that then you can just change these slots to what you have so i'm using a system of uh, ambient occlusion roughness and subsurface for my map so i would recommend you do the same but you don't necessarily need to use a subsurface map in order to get this. You can just uh, use a color, like a, the base color for that 
uh, if you'd like. A lot of people kind of do that to make it cheaper, but just, just bear in mind that there's a lot of settings in here. So I hope this uh, overview gives you a good idea of what just what this project kind of um, you know, offers. Um, obviously, there's, there's, there's two maps that you can work with. This, this, this is the other map in here. So uh, you can kind of see the nanite tech, you know, nanite um, system in there at play. We have cell bombing, and as I said, we also have nanite displacement, which in this particular map is not enabled, but it can work. Um, over here, this map is not uh, exactly full of foliage because it's kind of toned down for this project, but you could you could uh, make it as big as you want. We've got the horsetail uh, foliage, we've got grass, flowers, and this phalaris grass as well, which is like a very, very tall grass that you can use. Um, and just, you know, just go into the uh, foliage tool here to paint. Uh, obviously, we can really ram this through. So I'm just like literally adding everything in and just pushing it through there. You can see all of the types of foliage in one go. And this is all nanite. So if you go from lit to nanite visualization and into triangles, you'll notice that it's all using nanite right there. And it's actually quite detailed. Most of it, I mean, all of this is geometry. Uh, most, of, most of it is geometry, uh, not all of it, but most of it is geometry. And it actually looks quite nice. Look at that. That's, that's a very beautiful, I think, foliage um in you know that we can find in the system and again you can just keep on adding into your scene and it works just fine i think performance wise it's really good and it will get even better with, with the release of the next unreal engine version so yeah hope you guys enjoy the video uh hope uh, you like the pack and uh, let me know by any feedback that you may have or features that you want to see added i'm going to continue to develop this and add more foliage to it and I'm probably also going to, going to add things like trees and other things like that. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one.